What's up guys? I'm Nick Davis, owner of 239 Flies. Welcome to another 239 Flies fly tying how-to. Uh, got something pretty cool for you today. Uh, I was just recently down in Campeche, Mexico, uh, fishing with our good friend Enrico Puglisi. Name drop, I know. Um, and I uh, had a great time and caught some fish and pitched a little, uh, a little fly. Looks a little bit like this. Um, this is, I'm calling it the Casa Clarita Crusher, which the uh, Casa Clarita is, uh, is his lodge down there. Beautiful, beautiful location. Absolutely charm. Could not be more charming. Um, yeah, really hell of a, hell of a trip. Caught a lot of fish, tied some flies, really, uh, really good. Um, yeah, I was just thinking, I think the last time we did one of these fly tying videos was almost two years ago. And we didn't even have another fly shop back then. We had a, we've opened an entire another fly shop since we've done one of these videos. So pretty excited to bring this one to you today. Also, if you're, uh, if you're in the North Carolina area, uh, come visit us at, uh, come visit Brian Eldridge at uh, A2A Flies and Seven Devils. And uh, yeah, go check that out. As for today, let's, uh, I'm gonna show you how to tie this in a couple of different variations. We've got a subsurface uh, that looks a little bit like this one right here. Um, and then in another video, I will also show you how to tie a, a topwater variation, which is uh, a lot of fun as well. So, top to it. So this fly is tied entirely with uh, EP synthetic uh, brushes and materials. Um, yeah, like how are you gonna tie a fly going down to fish with Enrico and not have an all Enrico, you know, fly. So we're gonna, we are gonna whip it up on a uh, Tiemco 600 SP. So I apologize if uh, you've got to take out a small business loan or a personal loan to buy a pack of hooks. You know, yeah, they're, they're, a, little, they're a little pricey, but you know what? They, uh, they're a damn fine hook. Made with pistachios and printer ink. We've been making that joke for like 10 years now, Pat. I got a little laugh out of the camera guy. That never happens. That's pretty fun. All right, 600 SP, uh, size one, size two. You could probably scale this up if you wanted to, but uh, as you'll see once we get going, it's a really, really good small tarpon fly. Um, got some Danville 210. Tie with any thread you want to, as long as it's Danville 210. We're gonna start at the eye of the hook and we're gonna wrap back right to the bend. And just like we start so many of our flies, just a little couple twists of red cactus chenille to keep these fibers off of the shank of the hook. Stop them from fouling. Even the uneducated, um, hardly picked on, complete, uh, you know, fresh fish of tarpon of Campeche are still, uh, still will not eat a fouled fly. So there's something, uh, something in them genes. Maybe four or five wraps. Just a little something just like that. All right. And next, we're gonna grab our, this is a EP Foxy Brush in the three inch. Uh, and this is, this is the sand color. This is gonna come in the, uh, this is gonna be the color that we're doing. Um, the uh, Cormorant Poo is the color of this fly. Um, down there, there are a lot of cormorants and tarpon like to hang out underneath the cormorants. And it seems like every time, yeah, you can probably put the rest of that together. So you wanna tie cormorant poo uh, colored flies if you're going down to the old Mexico, Yucatan region. Using this technique that uh, our good boy, our good, our good man, our boy, Brian Eldridge, AKA Nymph Lord, AKA Manatee, what are we calling him now, Jimbo? Manatee lover, Manatee lover and advocate, Brian Eldridge. Our boy up at A28 holding it down. Uh, this is a technique he ties for an awesome little shrimp pattern that he makes. Shout out, Brian Eldridge. Um, he starts by wrapping, which we should probably do its own kit for. The fly is absolutely dope. We'll go up to A28 and shoot a saltwater fly tying video. That's how 239 is that. All right, so we're gonna start by wrapping this three inch foxy brush and we're gonna put a bunch of wraps in this. Probably close to 10 and it's gonna be just an absolute bushy mess when we're done, but that's gonna be part of the fun. You gotta get it good and screwed up before it, before you can fix it. 
But this three inch Foxy brush does a really good job of holding water, staying buoyant, but also being durable because it gets annihilated so much in the water, it holds up. All right, I think I got like eight wraps there. I wasn't counting, I can't count that high. Let's tease this out and get a, get a live view of what we're working with here. Yeah, we could probably use one more. Yeah, uno mas. Yeah, the tarpon fishing in Campeche is really dope. EP's Lodge, Casa Clarita is absolutely dope. World-class vacation, world-class fishery, great vibes in downtown Campeche. Tarpon fishing's fantastic. All juveniles, you know, but if you like to uh, find yourself tucked back up in the mangroves, roll casting at 30 pound rolling fish and just blasting them out of the trees, highly, highly recommend it. And I would highly, highly recommend throwing some of these. All right, so we're gonna comb this out. And you can see how that three inch foxy brush is nice and long. We're just gonna, nice and bushy. All right, so now, so now that, that kinda, that, that's, that's not the look we're going for. However, you're gonna grab your short EP scissors. You're gonna turn this fly over and you're gonna start trimming up the bottom of this thing and just taking off a little bit of the sides, working your way up until, oh, look at that. That's looking good. Bet you're wondering, Rico, where's this going? What's he doing? Now, Vision is clear. Look how nice that looks. That is a nice little bullet taper, perfect little length tail on an absolute snack of a fly this is going to be. Funny enough, oddly enough, um, when we were tying a fly, uh, Enrico and I were in the Mexican jungle tying a little topwater fly. Did the exact same thing. Forgot to put something in there. This looks nice. I wouldn't sleep on this step. I wouldn't skip this step. A little piece of black crystal flash. Just gonna bend it in half, put it right on top. Little lateral line, little antenna, little little what have you, a little hey, how you doing? Looks nice. Just, you know, that, that makes all the difference right there. Like that's, that's the difference between 10 fish day and going home empty handed. That little piece of crystal flash. All right, we're gonna tie this in here. Now that we've Completely effed this up just a little bit. There we go. Here she grabbed. All right. As, as we were. Just Arnold Palmer this on back a little bit. Probably give this a one, two, maybe a three or possibly a four. Now nah, let's do a four. Less is more, except when more is more. All right, so yeah, four wraps in there. That looks nice. Tie that off. Now you can kind of, if you wanted to, <clears throat> let's say your, your figure eighting skills or your, your toad body making skills aren't absolutely awesome. You could just put a couple of lead eyes or a, uh, a pair of lead eyes or mono eyes on the front of this thing right there just like this tie that off and call it done for a little uh for a nice little shrimp action or a nice little tiny little minnow would not look bad at all and you've got a nice little two brush two brush fly that you could probably tie up i don't know six million of in four minutes but that's usually that. That's not how we do it at, uh, at two, three, nine flies. We're more is more. All right, we got some 3D fibers. This is the Menhaden color. A little pop of green, a little gray olive. It's nice. I cut this into four bunches. Might use all four. Might just use three. We'll, uh, we'll let you know in a couple minutes. 
Now you can tie this in, you can figure eight this in like this, perpendicular to the hook shank. Uh, or if you want to be a real boss and make this a little bit easier on yourself, which I highly recommend, we're going to V-wrap this in, which gives it a nice, gives it a nice look. And you V-wrap it in by holding it almost parallel to the hook shank, tying it in on almost like eh, maybe more of an angle, maybe a 45 degree angle. And then tie in one side, bend the other side back, and then secure that down. It makes a nice little V, like a luscious V. And we'll repeat. You want to be careful with these thread wraps that you don't put too many of them on there. Again, more is not more anymore when it comes to thread wraps. Two. I think we might get all four on here. And an amazing feat. Oh, which reminds me, send your foot pics to Evan, 239 Flies. I think that story is almost worth telling on camera because I think it hasn't happened. I think it happened after our, um, should we make, we should roast Evan, right? A little bit? Yeah. Rico says, yeah. So we, uh, we started carrying Olakai uh, shoes and I was like, all right, cool. So we're going to, we're going to take some pictures with these things. How does Olakai sell them? Well, I'll look on Olakai's Instagram and see, well, you know, okay. So they, they've got their, you know, models and they're taking pictures of, you know, their feet in them. So I was like, all right, I'll go and go on down to the boat ramp and uh, take some pictures of, you know, my feet and some Molokai's. I point my camera down at my foot in my awesome leather flip-flops and I about throw up. I was like, wow, I've got the most gnarly feet I think I've ever seen. I can't, I can't post that. We need, we need a foot model. And I was thinking like li literally at this point, like we really need a foot model at 239 Flies. And then I was like, so... I went on Instagram and that was when I got an awful idea and said that we were looking for foot models and if you thought you had what it takes to be a foot model for 239 Flies, please send your submissions to Evan at 239flies.com <laughs> and Evan dead ass got like 20 pictures of dude's feet in his inbox and he's just sitting there. He texts me about 25 minutes after I leave the ramp. He's like, what did you do? <laughs> Love you, buddy. <laughs> All right. So now that we're back to reality here, I tied on some, uh, some mono eyes. And we're going to take, take these V-wrapped fibers here. And you can do this one side at a time, or you can mess up both sides at the same time. I like to be efficient and mess up both sides at the same time. And... Just pull them up, just like that, get both sides in your hand, and you're going to come in pretty tight on the bottom. If you come in too high on the bottom, it looks real dumb. So you got to come in real tight on the bottom, close with your scissors, and then up on a really sharp angle. And if you don't get it, don't panic. It's okay. And then we'll just kind of push this down a little bit. Trim this up. Might take a little bit off the bottom here. Finishing up with these, with these, with this one inch brush or inch and a half foxy brush. Just a little bit off the bottom, just to keep those feathers from or fibers from fouling. Like a nice anti-foul fly. And then from there, oh, we need we need some uh, we need some loon. Take some UV thick or thin or flow, whatever you got, whatever you love. This is thick. We'll just put some thick on the bottom, just like that. Spread it around with your bodkin just a little bit. Give a little zap. Get the, there we go, get the Loon, the loon logo in there. They'll love that. A couple of zaps. And that my friends, is the Casa Clarita Cruncher. That's the subsurface. I'm going to show you how to tie the topwater variation of this next. Mm -hmm.